So this 6 mm what you drawn in the front view we are now projected it down okay and we need to resemble the question which says that after marking 10 you have to move in by 6 and close this C type on both the sides. So here are parallel to this I will uh, align the scale and darken it till 6 mm. Then I slide down, align with the bottom 6, and then we'll close this to get the C shape what is required. Okay, so if we can look at this drawing what I have drawn, <coughs> intentionally I have drawn this kind of small error that is you can see that on one side the left side the gap between the two lines are more and here the gap is less. So this much, this much error is acceptable in engineering graphics because it, it happens that during projection your lines might your scale might not be parallel so you, will, you may not get this equal. So that much error is acceptable in engineering graphics. So after you are done with this part 1, let us now try to draw the small rectangle 2. For that you need to identify where is this small shoulder coming out in the front view that you need to identify. But the other dimension that is this width is same as this width and that is 10 millimeter. So the next dimension is 10 but the first dimension you need to recognize from the front view itself. So in the front view this small shoulder coming out is what we already marked 2 over here. So for that we need to project this uh, end of the small shoulder from both the sides and we need to darken that second part. So the second part is this rectangle smaller one which you can darken it on all the four sides. So here we go we can darken it on all the four sides. We will close this rectangle now. So that is how the second surface is ready. That is the small rectangle. What you can see on all the four sides. Okay. So that is how we are developing the object slowly. So first we have developed the circular surface. Then we develop this C type. Then the second shoulder. Now comes the third one. Third one is a rectangle of width 30 so the width is 30 the length is unknown but you can make out from the front view in the front view we have drawn a hidden line corresponding to this edge so that edge will give you the front view so if you try to compare this edge is same as this hidden line what we have drawn so if I can project this edge number 3 down I can get uh, the third surface which is which has a width of 30 mm and if you carefully observe in this diagram even this width is 30 if you keep your scale here this comes out to be 30 only so this gap is 30 itself right from the beginning because if you look at the question even this was 30 mm this gap was also 30 and even this is 30 so 30 was uniformly maintained right from the beginning so the length of edge number 3 is from year to year so wherever this edge intersects the inclined surface we need to project that down on the other side also if we extend this here project this down so after you projected edge number 3 down the length of edge number 3 is from year to year observe thoroughly and between these two projector the length of 3 is from this edge what you already drawn till the new edge what, you produ what is being produced so from here uh, if you darken this up and down if you can darken this up and down and if I close this one so that is how surface 3 is being developed so surface 3 length 
is same as the hidden line length same way here also from here if i uh, darken this part and the down one and if i close this so that is how surface 3 i am getting over here so overall the object appears to be as one single plane but there are many ups and downs this portion is a semicircular portion which is the topmost one the next c type is the second lower this is the third lower and this is the fourth lower portion so it actually it is down down but it seems to be in a single surface now finally after all the flat surface are done we are left with the inclined surface the u shape what i am showing by shaded part this portion we need to draw in the top view so for that line by line if you observe look at this inclined edge so in the top view if you observe from the top view if i project this on the top uh, this inclined edge will be seen as a straight line isn't it so see try to understand so this inclined edge in the top view will be seen as a straight line and that is apparent apparent means reduced length the actual or true length is quite long but the apparent length is reduced then you can see this edge of 50 mm width so from here what you can see is you can see edge of 50 mm width as you can see here and then you can see the third edge which is inside so in other words the outer edge of the inclined surface will be seen as a c type from the top view so this outer edge will be seen as a c type from the top view so let us try to do that so if you look at this diagram uh, this is that inclined surface from year to year and if i extend this down slowly this missing part first line second and third these three lines to if i enjoy connect this i will get the inclined surface automatically in between so what is the important conclusion we have learned from the last two question is in the top view whenever you draw inclined surface you always draw at the end because you are going to get it automatically if you start with the inclined surface in the exam you will end with inclined surface only so always try to draw the inclined surface at the end after you complete all the flat surface because flat surface is easy to visualize and draw inclined surface is difficult to visualize and draw so here if i close these three sides first double trace here also double trace and down also now if you observe thoroughly this inclined surface will give me the same thing what i need from the question so from the question uh, this c type if you look at the c type from the top view it will be uh, it will seem to be an inclined surface like a c type that is over here same thing i need to replica on the other side because of symmetry so because of symmetry we need to show the replica so on carefully analyzing the top view the only thing what is left is you can see at the bottom there is a semicircular edge which is a cavity and there is an edge going inside what you cannot see so if you guess for a while you will come to know that the first edge is here second edge if you observe look at the semicircle and this line wherever they meet a corner from this corner there is an edge going inside so there are two edges in the top view what you cannot see okay so this is something like a mountain so assume that the object is like a mountain and there is a tunnel which is being cut so from the top view you from the top view if you observe you cannot see this tunnel or you cannot see the edges of the tunnel going inside and if you don't show that in the drawing how will the reader come to know what is the depth of the tunnel so in this top view what is being drawn we are nowhere represented that there is a tunnel going inside and up to what depth so from the front you can make out that this corner of the semicircle and this corner of the semicircle if i project it down and if i draw hidden it will show me that there is a semicircular tunnel which is going inside so from here uh if i extend this tunnel of radius 22 down and on this side also if i extend radius 22 down and if i draw hidden line from here so let me draw a hidden line so the hidden line should intersect the top and bottom point of the dark line because they are perpendicular 
and second from your so what does this two inner lines represent it represents that there is a semicircular cavity which is going below the object and you cannot see from the top view so that is with this semicircular cavity uh, we are talking about so this is the end of the complete top view so front and top view both are done now let us see the side view of it before we start with the side view let us try to visualize the side view of this semi cylinder what we started with so in the side view when you observe this semi circular edge will be seen as a vertical line so when i extend this here so let me try to extend this so this will be seen as a vertical line like this okay so this semi circular edge in the side view will be seen as a vertical line then the bottom edge the bottom edge from year to year will be seen as a horizontal line so from year uh, parallel to this the bottom edge will be seen as a horizontal line again this semi circular edge will resemble a vertical line in the side view so over here uh, if i extend this further okay now next uh, and very important part let us proceed with okay so this boundary of the semi circle will be seen but it is not throughout because there is a cut out in between so you can see this boundary 15 mm it is 15 written here so up to 15 mm uh, you can see the boundary dark so you need to visualize step by step so after you reach this boundary you can see up to boundary only because in the side view you can see everything what is above this you cannot see what is going down so you can see up to this surface only so you can see the boundary as a straight line then this circular edge on both the sides will be seen as a vertical line and then you have to close this one so if i project this points down from here on both the sides you can see that the surface goes down like this and we need to close it so that is how a c type is seen for the semi circular surface in the side view so this vertical line small line is 8 mm deep so that is how the side view of a cylinder is seen so when we start with the side view this portion the top portion what i was talking about was a c type this we can draw at the end also let us start step by step so the first nearest flat surface is this one one what can be seen second are these two flat surfaces in the side view what can be seen third is this 45 all of flat surface so let us draw these three flat surfaces first of all first second and third so we need to identify where are these flat surfaces in this front view first of all so surface number 1 if you look in the front it's a vertical line so first of all i will erase the initially 1 2 3 otherwise it will create confusion you need not erase the light lines huh? they need to be uh, retained for construction purpose okay so in the side view this one in the front will be seen as a vertical line so this is that vertical line and that same vertical line is here also so this is your surface number 1 surface number 2 is this vertical edge so if you try to uh, compare this with the front view what is being drawn so this height is your surface 2 next comes surface 3 surface 3 is the hidden edge what you can see here it, it is this hidden edge so this hidden line is surface number 3 from year to year now same thing what we what we will be doing is we'll try to identify 1 2 and 3 in the top view also because once you come to know about front end top view and if you project them the combination will give you the side view to so surface number 1 if you just extend this line so this length from year to year that is surface 1 also in the top view if you look at this diagram surface 1 is seen as a line in the top view if you observe 1 is seen as a line and that line is here the extreme one second one if you try to observe it is the c type what is drawn what is drawn before and second one is the small edge of 10 mm each that will give you the second one so in this diagram uh, that initial c type was here and this line this is our second part 
and the next second part is here so this is your 10 millimeter on both the sides this length so that length you need to project in the side view finally comes the third one the third one is in between two so in between two this edge what is inside this one that is your edge number three okay so let us start one by one first of all we start with edge number one okay so if you look at this uh, edge number one the height is 10 so that same height 10 is here we need to project this 10 on in the side view so we'll align the scale and uh, we will extend this here so remember don't project everything and make a chessboard what you do is that project one line one point darken that out and then you think about the next part so i will darken this uh, 10 millimeter width So see this rectangle of length 50 and height 10 is ready. So this was the first rectangle. So if you view from the side, this is that first rectangle what you can see. Now this second rectangle, height you will come to know from front view and width from the top view that is 10 mm. So this second number height is already identified here, it is here. This is the second height. So let us project this second height on this side. Yeah, so it's done. Now the width of this second is 10. Okay, so if you look in the top view, try to identify where is this C type, this, this edge. So that edge is second is here, if you can make out. So you need to extend this till 45 degree line and then transfer up. And the combination will give you the second surface. So from here, uh, if I extend this down light and from here, these are the parallel surfaces. So this combination rectangle that is height of second from the front view and uh, width from the top view will give will give us a uh, second rectangle so let us darken this So darken this on both the sides that is how surface number two is ready with us so one is ready two is ready now surface number three is the inner rectangle of height 45 and the width is 30 this width is same as 30 and height is 45 so height 45 in the front view is the height of this hidden line and width 30 in the top view is this dark edge this is 30 so see 30 is already projected can you see that it is the in between gap within two but the height 45 is yet to be projected so we need to project a uh, height 45 so for the top line is already done from the bottom edge we need to extend this and uh, from the question itself we can make out that the third rectangle we need to close this to get a complete rectangle darken in between two so here in between these two and at the bottom this one and here we need to double trace so that is how the third surface is also ready now once first second and third is ready first second and third is ready we can easily get the inclined surface by closing the rectangle by closing the rectangle we can easily get the inclined surface so here from the diagram from the question if you compare yeah from here only if you compare this one uh, these three lines first second and third we need to close see this edge this edge is nothing but the 
outer inclined surface this is the second inclined edge so this is the second inclined edge and moreover if you compare the front view isn't this the inclined line so if you extend both the inclined line you will find that something is missing here so this edge we need to close down on both the sides okay so by closing it we get the inclined surface automatically now the part what is left is this uh, the above cylinder that is a c type so this c type surface is being left out so that we can complete the side view so to begin with let us start one by one so if you look at the inclined uh, sorry if you look at the curved surface in the side view it will be seen as a vertical line correct so in this question the curved surface is this one so this curved surface when you look from the side it is seen as a vertical line so for that we need to close this edge and it lies on the extreme side because there is no object beyond that so we have closed this on both the sides okay then as we discussed before you can see the boundary of the cylinder which is 15 mm wide this is 15 and there is no need to measure 15 because in the top view you already drawn 15 so in the top view if you look here the cylinder is in the center isn't it and this dimension is 15 and one more 15 is from bottom so if i project both this in the side view i can easily get the cylinder so from here uh if i extend the ruler scale down let me draw a light line first and second light line over here then parallel to this edge if i extend the light line above and the second light line above so the combination of both will give you give me that edge so this is the boundary of the cylinder up to 15 mm what can be seen dark okay so once this uh, 15 mm is drawn you can see this circular edge as a straight line which is coming 8 mm down have you drawn this 8 mm somewhere in the front yes it was the hidden line so this hidden line was 8 mm so from here uh, if i could extend or project this 8 mm i can get uh, this three lines darken which will give me the complete cylinder so this gives me the complete cylinder see like this so here the complete picture of the side view is ready so if you compress the object like a sponge so this object will look like this after you compress it the only thing left in the side view is see there is a semicircular cavity which you cannot see from side and the depth of the cavity is throughout you cannot see the topmost boundary so if you look at this diagram from the side view when you observe you cannot see this boundary of the semicircular cavity and that is going throughout so here this boundary needs to be projected so let us project the boundary here okay and that cavity is throughout so double trace and draw neat hidden lines so we need to double trace and draw neat hidden lines so see that is how i drawn neat hidden line so this hidden line represents that there is a circular surface going inside let us talk about the axis now how to draw the axis in the side view so in the side view what happens look carefully so when you look in the side view from here this edge at the bottom and the axis what is going inside see this axis both of them will overlap now the question is if a dark line or an object line overlaps with an axis line then what we need to draw so the answer is when you look in the side view what comes first yes object line comes first so you need to draw object line here do not erase this and draw axis line otherwise marks will be erased so here whenever object line overlaps with axis line always draw the object line first in other words object line is more brighter because it is dark and this is imaginary that is medium dark so when a dark line overlaps with medium dark what you can see is dark one so you should draw the dark line so that is what we have to draw here so here axis you need not draw because it overlaps okay so as we discussed before once the three views are ready without dimensioning drawing has no meaning 
so we need to show 10 to 12 important dimensions which comprises of length width and height okay now let us start with some important dimensions so as we know that the important dimensions are one which covers length width and height of the object so the length of the object is given in the question as 90 okay and uh, we can show length at multiple places we can show in the front view here or with respect to top view also so we cannot show 90 here even though this is 90 from year to year we cannot show here because it is very far from the actual object so whenever you show dimension it, it should be near to the object line so here i can show 90 here so let us uh, erase a bit now from here we will leave a gap of 2 millimeter and draw medium drag extension line i hope all of you know by this time why we should leave a gap so the gap is left so that you can understand the difference between object line and imaginary line and from your medium dark line and then neatly you have to show the arrow mark the 3 is to 1 ratio 3 mm length 1 millimeter width or height and you should write 90 above the line so the first dimension 90 is being shown which is the length of the object so take care about 9 how to write just refer the scale and if you look at the ISO standards, how is 9 written like a G? Then 4, you need to take care of 4, 7, 9, very important numbers. Okay, so mm -hmm. just look at the scale what you have. Now once length is over, height in the question is nowhere shown 85 directly. So height is being split into two parts. One is 70 and second is radius 15. So we need to add these two dimensions to show the height which is that 1 is 70 till the center and 15 is the radius so in this diagram 70 is the height and height can be shown either in the front view or in the side view so we can split like this we can show 70 in the side view and we can show 15 radius in the front view so we can do that so from here you need to leave 2 millimeter gap and draw extension line like this and from here at the bottom extension line then leave a gap of around 10 to 12 mm draw dimension line show neat arrowheads that is being practiced before now the question is on which side will you write 70 okay so for that all of you should know this ki whenever you write a number assume that the left side is your hinge and slowly swivel so when you swivel at an angle 70 will still remain attached with the line and when you make it vertical 70 is written on this side so the number along with the line slowly raises up and that is how it is written above so this is called above the line above the line and above the line the so same way when you write 70 here 70 should be written like this but height is not only 70 we need to show radius 15 also so the reader will read 70 from here project this here and from here you need to show one arrowhead and in the question you have to copy from the question don't try to write diameter in the question it mentioned it is mentioned r15 so you have to just pick up from the question and place it here so above the line above the line uh, you should write this as capital r and 15 you have to see to it that the font size should remain uniform throughout okay uniformity is and consistency is more important in drawing so after length and height now comes the width so width of the object if you want to show 10 to 12 dimension what you do is that you pick up multiple dimension together for example you pick up 10 30 and 50 together and show them at a time so always show smaller dimensions first followed by larger one so if you look at this diagram uh, in the top view this dimension is 10 what is given the question and this is 30 so here we can show 10 so see now 10 uh, don't show from here because if you show like this it is not very clear ki 10 is from where to where to 10 actually is from year to year but if you show extension line from here it is not clear so what you do is that from here leave 2 millimeter gap and then show extension from inside similarly for 30 show extension from inside and then a common line and then you should write this as 10 and as well as 30 so write 10 above the line and write 30 on this side so 10 and 30 can be shown together we can show 50 later on here also or you can show in the side view so already top view has three dimension 
so let us show 50 in the side view so 50 can be shown here so don't forget to leave a gap of 2 millimeter and you have to show medium drag extension line over the projection line what you have drawn before you have to show the projection line what is drawn before and this width is 50 millimeter so we are showing 50 over here so you can see that length width and height are shown and if you count the dimensions 1 2 3 4 5 only 6 dimensions are there we need to show some more so in the front view the number of dimensions are least only one we need to show few more so we can show radius 22 so how to show radius 22 let us see so dimension should never be shown inside the object what i mean to say is don't write r22 inside the view then what one can do is you can either extend it too long or you can extend it behind also like this so extending behind is a good it is a good technique so from here you can draw a horizontal line and you can write r22 so r22 can be written here so that is how we have written radius c it's written here also and here also the difference is here is written outside here it is on the inner side so both are acceptable okay so apart from this uh, we need to show three more dimensions we can show this 40 in the front view or we can show this 10 we can show this 20 15 there are many options so in the side view see this dimension is 15 and 20 okay so in the side view we can show this as 15 and this as 20 so from here we can show multiple dimensions so here uh, this dimension is 15 and this dimension is 20 so after everything is done 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 uh, one more we need to show so as to complete so in the front view what one can do is uh, we can show this 10 what is shown in the front view along with that this 40 can also be shown so this dimension is 10 what is given the question and the behind dimension is 40 so this 10 can be shown here always write above the line 10 and 40 shown here okay so these are the complete three views what is required for orthography projection Now to make this very clear, if I draw the intermediate xy line and if you try to visualize our basic concepts of graphics, so this view is called as the front view, you need not write in the exam, just for your reference. This view is called as the top view and this is our left hand side view on the right. Okay, the red line is our xy line, we know that. Okay, so we, have, we also know that front view is drawn on the vertical plane. So this is our vertical plane. You should know about that. Top view is drawn on the horizontal plane. So this is the horizontal plane. And left hand side view is drawn on the right profile plane. So this is our RPP. If you close these planes, for example, this is HP. So if you close HP and if you close right profile plane, you're going to get three sided planes. And when you open that, them up, that is how drawing is drawn. So if you hold this front view in your hand, and if you take a turn, you will get left hand side view. So just turn on the on this side. Okay, so this is the front view. And if you just turn on this side, you will get the side view. This is the front view. If you just make it to stand, you will get the top view. Okay, the front view is here. If you want to see the top view, just make this to stand. So the top view can be seen here. And this is your side view on the other side.